the people are going to be looking to find a solution. Um, so this is it. You must use Dawn bacteria soap. You must add after the liquids are together in a warm pot. You mix your liquids together in a pot, so you're going to warm it up. It's very important to warm up your concoction to hotter than body temperature. Because when you're in the shower and you put the substance on your skin, if it's warmer than body temperature, the foreign substance is literally jumps out of your skin into the solution um, because it, it gets confused. And it's motion and the chemistry of these solutions that make it work. You can't just put these together and rub it on you and think it's going to work. You have to do two things. You must oxidize your chemicals. You do it in a blender. Or you can just fluff it up. Or you can use vinegar with a little bit of soda, uh, baking soda. And if you know your uh, history back in elementary school and science projects, that is the baking soda and vinegar makes the volcano erupt. If you saw that, I know that was fun. And it's going to do the same thing. So you can do that at the very end. You can put it in a large container, throw it some baking soda, and the thing will have an explosion almost, and mix all your um, chemicals together, and they get nice sudsy. So you don't need a blender, but you can to whip it up and then just use just the foam. It's the layer of the foam and all that air that makes this compound loosen up. Okay. Also, you need a good pH body. So you can use cream de tartare, a very small amount. Again, I won't be giving out exact amounts because it is um, roughly, you can play around with it. Be very careful with cream de tartare. You don't want to do too much. A half a teaspoon every day is probably good enough for my body weight. Some, then you can go up to maybe a, a teaspoon. You'll play with it. I'll tell you, if you do too much, you'll get a headache. Don't panic. It's just because you do too much tartare. Never give that to your pet if they have it. I'm not going to talk about pets. I'm still trying to figure that out and help my dog who is also plaguing. And I give her the same baths that I take. But it's been very helpful. So this mixed with, you don't hear this very often, but it's one of my best friends. And that is iodine, red iodine. You know, this was not one of the most important things they had to kill bacteria and funguses during the time before antibiotics were created. Um, it's much better, um, and it's, you know, it's red, it, it looks very, um, stained, like it looks stained, but I usually put it in my laundry, and it, it brightens it up. I also use Dawn in my laundry, mixed with, of course, Forex, and I use bleach, of course, with, um, an oxygen, an oxygen power substance that brings oxygen, again, into the substance. One of my favorite things I add to my solution is hydrogen peroxide. Be careful now. Don't ever really use this by itself. It can make your lesions and things that you're trying to remove um, encased in a painful uh, situation there. Now, yes, rubbing alcohol. Just a dash and, of course, Bleach. Yes, we're going to put this on our skin. Um, but you'll be surprised of how happy your skin was will be. I don't even use lotion after I remove this. It's like natural. It's because we're coated and your skin can't breathe. Now, it's important to keep this lather on you. What you can do if you have the time is put this soap on you and let it dry. Or at least get it kind of gooey and sticky when it's drying and then remove it. The removal um, um, is important as well, um, and not with your hands or a sponge. You need to be aggressive, and I'll tell you some uh, exfoliate-type products you can use to get this stuff off you. Apple cider vinegar, you need to use this too. Now, sometimes I don't put this in my solution, or I'll switch it out, where I know if I'm going to use this, it's going to cut the soap suds down, so I'll have to put a lot more of this in it. Um, so if I'm like, when I want to really, there's two ways you can remove this stuff. You can do it in the shower with chemicals and loosen it up and it pours out of you, or you can, um, during the 
day, if you don't have any access to bathing, you can, you can remove it with a dry technique, um, which I do during the day. And I'll talk about that next. Um, so if I want to just shave and I want it nice and smooth and lots of silky soft, um, I won't put any vinegar in. Um, but if I also I can take vinegar at the very end and just take a cup of it and just dip my sponge in it and wipe my entire body at the end. It, it makes everything um, clean and you feel squeaky clean, that slippery clean, okay? Because this stuff is going to remove a lot of this fluid and it starts to keep coming out after you've done showering because you're going to take a hot shower um, and you're going to be dehydrated because this is a lot of fluid coming out of your out of your skin. Now skin doesn't do this. You can't wash off skin. So this is a very different type of illness that we're dealing with. Okay? It's not real. It's a, it's a foreign object that's masking your body and your body's not fighting it but we have to get rid of it. Also you can eat this and these products. You can have a little bit of borax every day and you can go online and look at other people's for the measurements. This is entertainment purposes only so I don't need to give you the actual amount. This is just science fiction by the way and I'm doing this for a film. This is not real. This is entertainment only of course. Now so apple cider vinegar is good to drink or you can, it's stinky. I don't like vinegar that much but um, it really works a lot. Now, this is something you're not going to hear. Additives to my primary. These are my primary. My primary ingredients for soap. I put them together, and you can put you, uh, iodine you can get online. It's a lot cheaper to get by the gallon. Um, or you can go to like, um, you know, Walmart for like $7.90 for a small amount. It's not worth it. You need to get a bigger amount, okay? Um, the oxygen and alcohol and peroxide, these should be put in at the very end in your pot when you're warming it up. Um, I wouldn't try to get it boiling because it's almost too hot and it may um, burn actually the ingredients. And it's going to evaporate these bleach, peroxide, and of course rubbing alcohol will, as you get it hot, it's going to, you know, it, it come out in the air and it evaporate and you're not going to feel any of the these three, if you're boiling it for too long. Also, be careful with the vapors. Make sure you use a fan when you're cooking this concoction. These, I found, adding them to my soap has made a big difference. These loosen it up, these go in and kill the shit. Okay, so I highly recommend a little bit of this, and too much alcohol is going to sting, so is this one. But this is wonderful. This makes you feel super clean. Talk about oxidizing the soap. It does it naturally because it's full of bubbles. You want to use this directly when your skin's a little bit too harsh, but to pour it into your substance is great. Again, to experiment with it. Um, I'll show you, I'm going to pour it at the very end and you'll see how much I use. And it's just for a batch, okay? And I don't measure that, I just pour it. Another nice additive and something you're going to be using outside of the shower, which you don't hear about, is calamine lotion. It's pink and you can, I guess you could get calamine lotion that is not um, pink, but so if you're going to wear this during the day, usually I wear a shirt over myself and you can't see it, but you mix this, now this is something you're not going to hear very often, with these substances here. Foot powder. You put about a half a bottle of foot powder into the whole bottle of this, and it acts as a absorbent, so it absorbs moisture, but it absorbs the biofilm really, really well. Or you, if you're in the shower, you can have some soap and just put a handful of this in your hand and use it. It, it, it absorbs this stuff, this film, biofilm, like gets sucked up into this foot powder. It's excellent. You can also use, of course, baking soda. Baking soda is good. Sorry, baking soda. I had it on the table. So baking soda, okay, is great also to pour into the solution. This is something I do during the day. I simply take a little bit of this and pour it into 
you see here. Mix it around. And now you have a Morgellons disease facial.